हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू प्रशांत आई ए एस सो फ्रेंड्स इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1858 एंड इंडियन काउंसिल एक्ट्स एंड इन दिस क्लास वी विल कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन विद गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1909 सो फ्रेंड्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1909 इज आल्सो नोन एज मॉरले मिंटो रिफॉर्म ओके व्हाई बिकॉज लॉर्ड मॉरले वाज द सेक्रेटरी ऑफ स्टेट फॉर इंडिया एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एंड लॉर्ड मिंटो वाज द गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ओके नाउ फ्रेंड्स लॉर्ड मॉरले वॉज अ वेरी गुड पर्सन एंड ही वॉज सपोर्टिव of the administrative reforms in india so he submitted his report to the parliament of britain and the parliament of britain passed government of india act 1909 so now what were the provisions of this act so friends first of all this act first of all the size of central and provincial legislative council was increased okay so first of all according to this act the size of provincial and legislative council was increased so now what does it mean so it means that now the number of members in the central legislative council and provincial legislative council increased for example i have told you in the act of 1892 that the maximum strength of the maximum strength of the central legislative council was 16 but now that maximum strength was increased to 60 okay so now the maximum strength of the central legislative council became 60 okay so now the maximum strength of the central legislative council became 60 okay but friends there was the official majority in central legislative council okay so now what does it mean so i have told you that there were two type of member there were two types of member in legislative council official member and non official member official members were those who were appointed as the officers in british indian government who were serving as the officers in british indian government okay means they were the government servants so according to this act there was official majority in the central legislative council it means that the number of official members was more than the number of non official members okay now friends the size of provincial legislative council was also increased but there was non official majority in provincial legislative council now what does it mean it means that the number of non official members was more than official members in provincial legislative councils okay now friends this act also increased the deliberative functions or deliberative powers of the legislative council for example i have told you in the act of 1892 that legislative council was not allowed to ask question on budget to ask supplementary questions but government of india act 1909 provided them power to ask questions on budget to move resolution on budget to ask supplementary questions okay so their power was increased now friends this act also provided for the appointment of indians in the executive council of viceroy now what does it mean so i have told you that till now only britishers were appointed in the executive council of viceroy indians were not allowed in the executive council of viceroy but this act this act provided for the appointment of indians in the executive council of viceroy means now indians would also appointed in the executive council of viceroy so friends satendra prasad sinha was the first indian member of the executive council of viceroy and he was a law member okay now friends this act provided for the separate electorate for muslims now what is the meaning of separate electorate it means that only muslim voters were allowed to vote for muslim candidates okay so now only muslim voters were allowed to vote for muslim candidates and this is known as communal electorate this is known as communal electorate okay and due to this only lord minto is known as the father of communal electorate okay why because he started communal representation or communal electorate system in india now friends there was a separate representation for presidency corporation for the members of presidency corporation members of chamber of commerce 
जमींदार्स एंड यूनिवर्स एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज नाउ वट डज इट मीन सो सपोज देर आर मेनी जमींदार्स so these zamindars were also given representation in the legislative council of the governor general of india means some zamindars were nominated to the legislative council of governor general of india so zamindars member of universities chamber of commerce okay member of presidency corporations they also had their representation in the legislative council okay now friends then comes the government of india act 1919 okay now the government of india act 1919 is also known as montagu claims for reform so now why so friends lord montagu was the secretary of state for india at that point of time and lord claims for was the governor general of india and viceroy at that point of time and on the basis of their rep- recommendations only the parliament of britain passed government of india act 1919 and that's why this act is also known as montagu claims for reform okay so now what were the provisions of that act so first of all this act separated the central and provincial subjects for legislation okay this act separated central and provincial subjects for legislation now what does it mean so friends there are many subjects to make law upon for example education is a subject okay defense is a subject policing is a subject agriculture is a subject okay so central legislative council so dif- so different subjects some subjects were given to central government and some subjects were given to provincial government so there were two lists central list and provincial list so central legislative council was authorized to make law on central subjects okay and provincial legislative council was authorized to make law on provincial subjects for example defense defense is a central subject so now central legislative council was authorized to make law on defense defense means war treaty alliances international relation okay so now central legislative council was authorized to make law on all the central all the all the subjects of central list for example defense okay and provincial legislative council was allowed was authorized to make law on all the subjects of provincial list for example agriculture was a subject of provincial list so provincial legislative council were allowed to make law on agriculture to make law on all the matters related to agriculture okay now friends these provincial subjects were further divided into transferred and reserved okay so these provincial subjects were further divided into transferred and reserved so now what does it mean so friends at that point of time governor was the head of province okay and there was a executive council to help him okay and there was a legislative council and this legislative council was elected by the people okay so what was the scene that there was a governor who was the head of province there was a executive council to assist him there was a legislative council to make law and this legislative council was elected by people and some people were chosen from within the membership of legislative council and they were appointed as ministers okay some people were chosen from within the members of legislative council and they were made ministers for example i have given you the uh, i have uh, in the previous classes i have taught you about the formation of government in india so how government forms in india how government forms in india so some members from lok sabha and rajya sabha are chosen some members are chosen from within the membership of lok sabha and rajya sabha and they are made ministers so similarly some members were chosen from within the membership of legislative council and they were made ministers okay now friends as these members were the as these ministers were the member of legislative council so they were responsible to legislative council okay now what happened that these ministers were in charge of all the subjects under transfer list okay so these ministers were in charge of all the subjects under transfer list means they were responsible for the administration of the subjects under transfer list and this governor and his executive council was responsible for the administration of subjects under reserved list okay means they had the authority of all the subjects they have the authority to administer all the subjects under reserved lists 
ओके नाउ फ्रेंड्स वॉट हैपन्ड दैट दीज मिनिस्टर्स वर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल ओके एंड दिस लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वॉज चूजन बाय पीपल सो अल्टीमेटली दीज मिनिस्टर्स वर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू पीपल ओनली सो नाउ वट डज इट मीन दैट दीज मिनिस्टर्स वर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल इट मीन्स दैट लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल हैड द पावर टू आस्क क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दीज मिनिस्टर्स लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल हैड द पावर टू पनिश दैम एंड दीज मिनिस्टर्स वर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू दीज मिनिस्टर्स वर आंसरेबल टू लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल बट दिस वॉज नॉट द सीन विद गवर्नर एंड इज एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल गवर्नर एंड इज एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल वॉज नॉट रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल दे वर डायरेक्टली रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द पार्लियामेंट ऑफ ब्रिटेन so legislative council did not have power to punish them okay now friends what happened that all the important subjects all the important subjects were kept under reserved list and all the inferior subjects all the subjects which had very less importance they were kept under transfer list okay for example agriculture was a subject of transfer list and irrigation was a subject of reserved list so no matter so for example even if you are making very good laws for agriculture if you are making very good policies for agriculture but then also if irrigation is not provided at time if irrigation is not provided on time then crops and agriculture is bound to suffer okay and finally who would be blamed for the bad agriculture definitely the ministers would be blamed why because who had the who had the authority of uh, the agriculture definitely ministers had the authority of agriculture but agriculture was dependent on irrigation and irrigation was in the hand of governor and executive council so it was a complete conspiracy of britishers to held that these minister these indian people don't have these indian people don't have the capability of administration they are not good administrators okay so for name sake they provided the power to indian ministers to legislative council but actual power was in the hand of governor why because agriculture is dependent on irrigation okay even if you are making very good policies for agriculture and irrigation is not provided on time then definitely crops are bound to suffer so transfer list was actually dependent on reserved list and all the important subjects like policing okay maintenance of law and order taxation these were kept under reserved list and all the uh, inferior subjects were kept under transfer list now friends this act also introduced by chamberal legislature in the center okay so friends this act introduced by chamberal legislature at the center now what does it mean so it means that till now there was only single house for central legislative council but now there were two houses for uh, central legislative council the lower house was known as legislative assembly and the upper house was known as council of states okay this system was very similar to the current system followed in india for example we have lok sabha and rajya sabha so lok sabha and rajya sabha are the houses of parliament similarly legislative assembly and council of state were the two houses of central legislative council okay after that and friends majority of the members of these legislative bodies majority of the members of legislative assembly and council of state were elected directly by the people so here the process of direct election started and majority of the people a uh, majority of the members of legislative assembly as well as council of state they were directly elected by the people but friends right to vote or franchisee was given to very limited people okay it was given to very less number of people and what was the basis of uh, providing right to vote property tax education for example people who had a huge amount of property okay they were provided with the right to vote people who were very huge tax payers to the government people who were the tax payer to the government means they were paying a huge amount of tax to the government okay people who had very good educational background only those persons were allowed to vote and others were not allowed to vote women were not allowed to vote okay so right to vote was given to a very limited number of people so the election process was also not very good now what was the next provision so friends now 3 out of 6 members of executive of executive council of viceroy were to be indian now what does it mean so there were 6 members in the executive council of viceroy 
ओके सो दिस एक्ट प्रोवाइडेड दैट नाउ थ्री आउट ऑफ सिक्स मेंबर्स शुड बी इंडियन ओके सो टिल नाउ वट वॉज द प्रैक्टिस दैट मेजोरिटी ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल ऑफ वाइस रॉय वर ब्रिटिशर्स बट नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस एक्ट एटलीस्ट थ्री मेंबर्स शुड बी इंडियन सो एटलीस्ट थ्री मेंबर्स ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल ऑफ वाइस रॉय शुड बी इंडियंस नाउ फ्रेंड्स दिस एक्ट फर्दर स्ट्रेंथ द इलेक्ट्रोरेट कम्युनलिज्म नाउ वट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स दैट दिस एक्ट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द सेपरेट इलेक्ट्रोरेट फॉर सिक्स इंडियन क्रिस्टियंस एंग्लो इंडियंस एंड यूरोपियंस ओके सो सेपरेट इलेक्ट्रोरेट वर स्टेब्लिस्ड फॉर सिक्स इंडियन क्रिस्टियंस एंग्लो इंडियंस एंड यूरोपियंस नाउ वट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स दैट नाउ ओनली सिक्स वर अलाउड टू वोट फॉर सिक्स कैंडिडेट only indian christian voters were allowed to vote for uh, to vote for indian christian candidate similarly only anglo indian uh, only anglo indian uh, people were allowed to vote for anglo indian candidate and only european people european voters were allowed to vote for european candidate okay now friends this act also provided for uh, for establishment of a new post the post of the high commissioner of india so high commissioner of india was a new post uh, which was created by government of india act 1919 and what was his role so uh, he was given with some of the functions and powers of secretary of state so secretary of state was very overburdened why because uh, he was the in charge of entire india so a new post was created high commissioner of india and some of the functions and powers of secretary of state were given to high commissioner of india okay now friends this act also provided for the establishment of a public service commission okay and according to the provision of this act a central public uh, public service commission was established in 1926 now what is a central public commission so for example currently we have upsc union public uh, union public service commission and uh, what is the work of upsc upsc recruits the central civil servants for example ias officers ips officers ifs officers similarly a central psc was established a central public service commission was established and the work of that public service commission was to recruit the central civil servants okay now friends now friends this act also provided for the separate budget for center and provinces now what does it mean so till now what was the practice that the power of budget was only in the hand of center okay so now budget was only passed in center and the power of budget or money was only in the hands of center or governor general of india and viceroy but now center had different budget and provinces had different budgets okay so now who was the in charge of the budget of center governor general of india and viceroy and who was the in charge of the budget of provinces definitely the governor of province so governor of provinces become in charge of the budget of their provinces so now they also had money power because earlier what was the practice that they were dependent on center for money but now they were not dependent on center for money they had their own money resources okay now friends this act also provided for the establishment of a statutory commission now what is this statutory commission and what is its role so what was the function of that statutory commission so friends that statutory commission was established to analyze the functioning and effect of government of india act 1919 after the 10 years of its enactment after the 10 years of its enforcement after the 10 years of its enforcement and to submit a report to the parliament of britain okay so friends then comes the government of india act 1935 so government of india act 1935 was the lengthiest act ever passed in the history of british indian government okay and this act was also very very important why it was important because most of the provisions of the current constitution of india were adopted from the government of india act 1935 okay now friends there were 321 sections and 10 schedules in the government of india act 1935 so imagine how lengthy it was so it was just like a mini constitution okay now what were the provisions of that government of india act 1935 so friends first of all this act provided for the establishment of a all india federation okay so now what is federation so friends in the 
प्रीवियस क्लास ऑल्सो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट फेडरेशन सो फेडरेशन मीन्स अ गवर्नमेंट वन गवर्नमेंट एट सेंट्रल लेवल टू लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वन गवर्नमेंट एट सेंट्रल लेवल एंड वन गवर्नमेंट एट प्रोविंशियल लेवल एंड बोथ द गवर्नमेंट हैव इक्वल पावर नन इज सबॉर्डिनेट टू अदर ओके बोथ हैव इक्वल पावर बोथ हैव डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट टू मेक लॉ अपॉन ओके सो द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव एम्ड टू मेक इंडिया इन टू अ फेडरेशन ओके एंड फ्रेंड्स ऑल द ब्रिटिश इंडियन प्रोविंसेस लाइक आगरा बॉम्बे बिहार ओके आगरा बॉम्बे बिहार बंगाल मद्रास एंड ऑल द प्रिंसली स्टेट्स लाइक कश्मीर दे वर टू वी द यूनिट्स ऑफ इंडिया फेडरेशन मीन्स दे वर टू वी द स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया फेडरेशन ओके बट फ्रेंड्स दिस फेडरेशन नेवर केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस वाई दिस फेडरेशन नेवर केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस बिकॉज प्रिंसली स्टेट्स नेवर एग्रीड टू ज्वाइन द इंडिया फेडरेशन ओके सो बिकॉज प्रिंसली स्टेट्स डिनाइड टू ज्वाइन ऑल इंडिया फेडरेशन दैट्स वाई दिस प्लान वॉज फेल्ड ओके नाउ वट वॉज इट सेकेंड प्रोविजन सो फ्रेंड्स दिस एक्ट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पावर डिविजन ऑफ पावर बिटवीन सेंटर एंड स्टेट सो देर वॉज अ क्लियर डिविजन एंड डिमार्केशन ऑफ पावर बिटवीन सेंटर एंड प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट सो देर वर थ्री लिस्ट फेडरल लिस्ट प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट एंड कंकरेंट लिस्ट नाउ देर वर फिफ्टी नाइन सब्जेक्ट इन फेडरल लिस्ट फिफ्टी फोर सब्जेक्ट इन प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट एंड थर्टी सिक्स सब्जेक्ट इन कंकरेंट लिस्ट ओके सो नाउ वट इज फेडरल लिस्ट सो फेडरल लिस्ट कंटेंड ऑल द सब्जेक्ट ऑन विच सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वॉज ऑथराइज टू मेक लॉ अपॉन ओके मीन्स फेडरल लिस्ट हैड ऑल दो सब्जेक्ट ऑन विच सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल कुड मेक लॉ फॉर एग्जाम्पल डिफेंस वॉज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फेडरल लिस्ट ओके टैक्सेशन वॉज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फेडरल लिस्ट ओके नाउ फ्रेंड्स प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट हैड ऑल द सब्जेक्ट ऑन विच द प्रोविंशियल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वर ऑथराइज टू मेक लॉ ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल एग्रीकल्चर वॉज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट इरीगेशन वॉज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट ओके मीन्स फॉर एग्रीकल्चर एंड इरीगेशन एंड ऑल फिफ्टी फोर सब्जेक्ट इन प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट प्रोविंशियल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल कुड मेक लॉ ओके नाउ फ्रेंड्स वट इज दिस कंकरेंट लिस्ट ओके सो इन फेडरल लिस्ट ऑल द सब्जेक्ट वर ऑफ नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस ओके इन फेडरल लिस्ट ऑल द सब्जेक्ट वर ऑफ द नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस वर ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ एंटायर इंडिया ओके प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट कंटेन द सब्जेक्ट विच वर ऑफ द लोकल इंपॉर्टेंस विच वर ऑफ द प्रोविंशियल इंपॉर्टेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल एग्रीकल्चर इज ऑफ लोकल इंपॉर्टेंस देर आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सिचुएशन इन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया सो एग्रीकल्चर इज अ मैटर ऑफ प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट एंड डिफेंस इज अ मैटर ऑफ एंटायर कंट्री डिफेंस इज अ मैटर ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ एंटायर कंट्री सो डिफेंस वॉज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फेडरल लिस्ट बट नाउ वट इज दिस कंकरेंट लिस्ट ओके सो फ्रेंड्स कंकरेंट लिस्ट कंटेंट द सब्जेक्ट विच वर एक्चुअली ऑफ द लोकल और प्रोविंशियल इंपॉर्टेंस ओके सो कंकरेंट लिस्ट हैड द सब्जेक्ट विच वर ऑफ द लोकल और प्रोविंशियल इंपॉर्टेंस बट द बट देर वॉज द नीड ऑफ यूनिफॉर्मिटी देर वॉज द नीड ऑफ यूनिफॉर्मिटी इन दीज सब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल पेनल कोड्स ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल सिविल प्रोसीजर कोड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैरिज लॉज ओके सो इन फॉर कंकरेंट लिस्ट फेडरल और सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वॉज ऑल्सो वॉज ऑथराइज टू मेक लॉ एंड प्रोविंशियल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वॉज ऑल्सो ऑथोराइज टू मेक लॉ ओके सो ऑन ऑल द थर्टी सिक्स सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कंकरेंट लिस्ट सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल was authorized to make law and provincial legislative council was also authorized to make law so concurrent list means common means center could also make law for it and state could also make law for it now friends residual powers were vested in viceroy so what is the meaning of residual powers so friends imagine uh, when the constitution of india was made when the constitution of india was made there was no internet there were no computers okay so there was no cyber crime but later on computers came the internet came and cyber crime also came means cyber crime increased and there was a need there was a need to make law to control these cyber crimes so now as when the constitution of india was made okay so there were no cyber crimes so cyber, so cyber law was not a part of federal list cyber law was not a part of provincial list cyber law was not a part of concurrent list 
ओके सो रेसिडुअल पावर्स मीन्स द सब्जेक्ट विच आर विच वर विच आर नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ फेडरल लिस्ट प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट और कंक्रेंट लिस्ट ओके इट मीन्स दैट दैट सब्जेक्ट और दैट थिंग वॉज नॉट प्रेजेंट एट द टाइम ऑफ फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव वॉज ऑल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज ऑल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ मिनी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑल दो सब्जेक्ट ऑल दो सब्जेक्ट विच वर नॉट प्रेजेंट ऑल दो सब्जेक्ट विच वर नॉट प्रेजेंट ड्यूरिंग द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव दीज ऑल सब्जेक्ट्स वर कॉल्ड एज रेजिडुअल लिस्ट और रेजिडुअल पावर्स ओके सो ऑल दीज रेजिडुअल पावर्स वर वेस्टेड इन वाइस रॉय मीन्स वाइस रॉय वुड डिसाइड मीन्स इट वॉज द पावर ऑफ वाइस रॉय वाइस रॉय हैड द पावर दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल देयर वॉज अ नीड फॉर साइबर लॉस सो नाउ वाइस रॉय हैड द पावर टू डिसाइड दैट वेदर द सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वुड मेक लॉ ऑन इट और स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल वुड मेक लॉ ऑन इट और इट वुड बी अ पार्ट ऑफ कंकरेंट लिस्ट ओके सो वाइस रॉय हैड द पावर टू पुट एनी न्यू सब्जेक्ट इन फेडरल लिस्ट प्रोविंशियल लिस्ट और कंकरेंट लिस्ट ओके सो इट दिस वॉज द डिविजन ऑफ पावर नाउ फ्रेंड्स वॉट एपन्ड दैट दिस एक्ट अबॉलिस्ट द डायर की इन प्रोविंसेस सो डायर की मीन्स द डुअल गवर्नमेंट ओके सो डायर की मीन्स दैट आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन द एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइनटीन that in the provinces the provincial subjects were divided into two parts transferred list and reserved list okay so provincial subjects were divided into two part transferred list and reserved list so this is known as diarchy diarchy means dual government okay so now this diarchy was abolished means this transferred list and this reserved list were abolished okay and in place of these lists uh, and in place of these lists Uh, autonomy was provided to the provinces means now provinces had much autonomy okay why because earlier what was the practice that these provinces were under the governor general of india the governor of province was under the governor general of india it was the duty of the governor of province to report to governor general of india but now governor of province was no more under the governor general of india okay now governor of province was independent of the governor general of india so as governor general of india used to report to secretary of state and parliament of britain now governor of province would also report to secretary of state and uh, parliament of britain means the autonomy of provinces increased okay though on some matters there was the control of governor general of india on provinces but for most of the matters for most of the subjects provinces become autonomous okay now friends as i have told you that diarchy was abolished means this the system of transferred list and reserved list was abolished so what was started so now the responsible government was started in the provinces now what is the meaning of responsible government responsible government means now all the subjects all the subjects of provincial list were administered by the ministers okay and these ministers were chosen from within the membership of provincial legislative council okay so now all the lists all the subjects means subjects of transferred list as well as subject of uh, reserved list so both of these lists were abolished okay and the subject of most of these lists were provided to the ministers so now ministers had the power to administer Bo, uh, administer all the subjects of provincial lists and these ministers were responsible to legislature and legislature was appointed by was elected by people the member of legislature were appointed by was elected by people okay so what is the meaning of that that ministers were responsible to legislature it means that legislature had the power to punish the ministers legislature had the authority to ask question from the ministers okay and all, as all the subjects all the subjects of the government were administered by these ministers so it means that the responsible government was formed in the provinces okay now friends what happened that diarchy was abolished in provinces but diarchy was introduced at center okay now what does it mean so all the subjects of the federal list were divided into two part reserved list and transferred list okay so all the subjects of the federal list all the 59 subjects of the federal list were divided into two part reserved list and transferred list okay and indian ministers were authorized to administer the subjects of transferred list and these indian ministers 
were again responsible to the central legislative council okay and viceroy means governor general of india and viceroy and his executive council was authorized to administer the subjects of reserve list okay so friends the same practice again started at central level and what happened that all the important subjects were kept in reserve list and all the subjects which were not of that importance or the subjects which were of in, which were inferior they were kept in transferred lists okay so viceroy was still very very powerful okay now friends what happened that bichameralism started in six provinces now what is the meaning of bichameralism it means that two high so two houses of legislative council okay so in the act of 1919 what happened that bichameralism started in the central level means the central legislative council now had two houses lower house and upper house so the similar practice was adopted for provinces also by the act of 1935 okay so government of india act 1935 provided for a bichameral legislative council for provinces means now the provincial legislative council of six provinces bengal bombay madras bihar assam and united province so the provincial legislative council of these six provinces would have two houses lower house and upper house okay the lower house was called as legislative assembly and upper house was called as legislative council okay and the same practice is continued till now also okay now friends this act strengthened the communal electorate further how so it introduced the separate electorate for scheduled castes women and labor now what does it mean it means that only the members of scheduled caste community were authorized to vote for scheduled caste candidates only women were allowed to vote for women only laborers were allowed to vote for laborers okay so it further strengthened the communal electorate system okay means what was this this was again the uh, policy of divide and rule okay now friends what was its next provision so friends the council of india was abolished now what was the council of india so remember in the act of 1858 government of india act 1858 i have told you that a new body was made known as council of india and the function of that body was to assist was to advise the secretary of state in his work so now by the act of 1935 the council of india was abolished means now council of india was no more in existence okay and all the powers of council of india were given to a new body known as team of advisers okay so now who would assist the secretary of state definitely team of advisers would assist the secretary of state okay so now what were the other provisions so friends this act provided for the establishment of federal psc means federal public service commission provincial public service commission and joint public service commission so what is federal public service commission so for example currently in india we have upsc union public uh, union public service commission and what is the role of upsc the function of upsc is to recruit central civil servants for example ias ips ifs irs okay and so on similarly the role of federal public service commission was to recruit the central civil servants for example ics officers okay and there was a provision to establish provincial public service commission so what is provincial uh, Sir, public service commission so provincial uh, public service commission is responsible for recruitment of provincial uh, provincial civil servants for example in india we have many pscs currently mp psc up psc bihar psc rajasthan psc telangana psc and so on okay so what is the role of these pscs what is the role of these public service commissions their role is to appoint the provincial uh, civil servants for example sdm tehsildar okay ranger uh, sdo okay sdop okay so similarly there was a provincial public service commission and its role was to appoint the uh, provincial civil servants okay now friends what is joint psc or joint public service commission so joint public service commission for suppose there are two states and these two states are very small in area and very small in population okay so a single psc a single public service commission was sufficient to recruit the officers for both of these states so joint public service commission means a single public uh, public service commission for two or more than two states okay 
Now, this act also provided for the establishment of Reserve Bank of India. Okay, so friends, the RBI was established by the Government of India Act 1935. Okay, and why RBI was established? So, RBI was established to monitor the flow of currency, okay, and uh, other things related to currency in the country. Okay, now friends, this act also provided for the establishment of a federal court. Okay, and the federal court was established in 1937. So, now what is a federal court? So, friends, I have told you that in the beginning that uh, the main aim of this act was to make India a federation. Okay, now in a federation, there are governments at two level, government at central level and government at state level and both the government are uh, equally powerful. Okay, both have different subjects to make law upon and similarly subjects were also distributed. Okay, so federal court is the court. Okay which resolves the dispute arising between the units of federation means any dispute between center and state any dispute between two state okay these disputes are resolved by the federal court so a federal court was established in order to resolve the disputes between the units of federation for example central government and state government two state governments okay for example if there is a dispute between the uh, governor of Bengal and governor of Bombay presidency, okay, then who will solve this problem? Definitely the federal court was authorized to solve that problem, okay. Now friends, according to the act of 1935, Burma was separated from India. So earlier Burma was the part of India, but the act of 1935 separated Burma from India, okay. Now friends, this act also increased the size of legislature, means now the number of members in provincial legislature and central legislative council increased okay so it increased the size of legislatures further okay now this act also increased the scope of franchisee now what does it mean scope of franchise so it means that now voting right was provided to more number of people okay so earlier voting right was provided to very less number of people but now voting right was provided to more number of people okay and according to the act of 1935 10% of Indian people got the voting right. Okay. So friends, that's all for today. In the next class, we will continue our discussion with Indian Independence Act 1947. Friends, there is an important announcement for you all. So friends, as I have promised you to provide notes. Okay. So from coming, uh, so from coming Monday, I will start providing you notes. Okay. And you can find the link of notes in the description of the video okay so from monday please do check the description of video you will find the link of notes okay in the description of video and i will provide you uh, i will start provide uh, i will start providing you the notes from the coming monday okay so friends in the end uh, i want to say that please like the video comment share to this channel uh, share the channel and uh, uh, Subscribe to my channel and share this video to all the people you know who are preparing for UPSC or any state PSC. Till then, take care of yourself. Thank you.